When is there a time where you will invest a little bit more, but maybe get a lot back in your investment? It's not something you hear a lot of in, in audio, uh, though it's getting better than a lot of people would think, but it's getting a little bit harder. So you have to look carefully. You know, the Crown XLS 1002 was the amplifier that I recommended to everybody because around its $350 street price, it was pretty unbeatable. In some cases, if you got an open box you used, um, you can do as well as $175 back in the day. When the Drive 2 Core family of XLS power amplifiers was introduced, uh, I got really excited about it because of efficiency, versatility. It weighed very little. I think out of the box it's 11 pounds. Uh, it may even be less than that. 19-inch uh, EIA rack mountable. 250 watts of power into 8 ohms, 350 into 4. Okay, it was a pretty tough animal to beat. Okay, when you buy multiples of these, it's a natural for a home theater setup or a very demanding music setup with a few caveats. We're going to talk a little bit more about how that goes, but we're going to give a couple of little basic differences and features with its nearest competitor, the Emotiva Basics A2 two channel stereo power amplifier. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's first talk a little bit about the history that I have with Crown XLS 1002. I kind of found out about these on a couple other different reviews as well as seeing these used in various different venues. And I thought, man, what a world. A giant killer, if you will, for doing home theater, uh, some casual listening with music. You couldn't beat it. It integrates with just about anything you put in front of it. My Tascam DR100 Mark III, all the way up to my AVM uh, 30 uh, Anthem uh, preamplifier processor, currently now running on uh, a Denon AVR 4802, which is no slouch as far as power. It's an honest to God 125 watts per channel and 8 ohms, all channels driven, okay, with no more than 0.005 uh, THD, if that matters to anyone. It's built to like a tank, you know, full linear power supply and so on. So I wanted to have more versatility, more headroom, more capability. And for what the crowns did, you couldn't beat them. But they ran into a couple of caveats that kept me from saying, well, this is the best buy in the in a power amplifier. Well, one, it's now $409. Used to be around 350 street price. So it went up quite a bit in the last couple of years. My nearest competitor right now, as a matter of fact, its nearest competitor, as far as I'm concerned, is the Emotiva Base X A2 power amplifier. 160 watts into 8 ohms, 250 into 4. Okay. Now, I believe I said it was 250 into 8 ohms on the crown. It's actually 215. So the differences between the two power amplifiers are virtually nil power-wise. Okay. Input sensitivity seems to favor the crown a little bit. Okay. Over the Emotiva. Okay. So I think it's like 27 dB versus 29. Is it noticeable? A little bit, but it's not enough to, you know, overstress it. You know, an audiovisual receiver or any pre processor preamplifier made today or in times past. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why the crown is no longer my champion. I think I kind of hit on it a little bit. Price four hundred and nine dollars. Now its retail is over six hundred and eighty dollars. Okay, so four hundred and nine dollars would appear fair, but when you compare what's going on inside, there are differences in philosophy here, and this is where I think the Emotiva Basics A2 comes out on top. Let's first talk about the differences that are inside the two amplifiers in consideration here, the Crown XLS 1002 and the Emotiva Base X A2. One is a pure Class D amplifier, that is the Crown. The Emotiva amplifier is a traditional Class AB amplifier. They start at the very core difference in their power supply. One uses a linear power supply and the other one uses a switching mode power supply. The details, as they say, the devil's the details is in the details actually. Uh, 105 centigrade electrolytic capacitors inside the Emotiva audio. Good quality electrolytics. The crown cheaps out a little bit. They go to an 85 centigrade electrolytic capacitor. Is that a big deal as far as longevity and life as time goes on? Could be. Uh, now granted that the uh, crown probably isn't as stressed as much as the Emotiva over time, so that might be a wash, but I appreciate the attention to detail that Emotiva gave as far as giving us a slightly more capable and, in my humble opinion, probably longer lasting electrolytic capacitor. They're the heart and soul of your power supply. Next is the huge toroidal transformer that Emotiva uses because it is a linear supply versus the very small, almost insignificant EI core transformer that they use inside of the uh, crown. Because of the fact that it's a switcher, they don't need a transformer that's nearly as large. Output transistors are really well uh, uh, cooled by the extruded aluminum and finned 
ribbed heatsink that Emotiva uses versus the rather almost forgettable stamp metal offerings over on the crown, as you can see in the differences on the inside. The probably the biggest uh, annoyance that I found with the crown is it's also its, its grace, and that's its short profile going from front to rear. It makes stacking the crown with other components terrible, <laughs> I can say, situation because the crown is a lot shallower in depth than the Emotiva is. The Emotiva is about the average depth for most components. 17, 17 inches wide for both components, but the Emotiva is probably a good 7-8 inches deeper than the uh, crown is. So you have to put the crown on top of something if you're not using another crown. So that's a that's a big nit. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's a big no-no. The other thing, when you take a look on the inside, take a look at the Emotiva compared to the crown. The crown is this crunch, stuffed together, really compact size here, frankly with no breathing room. Your electrolytics are way too close to the uh, power transformer. Really kind of silly, so that reduces their life potentially as well. The Emotiva very well isolates power supply electrolytics away from the uh, transformer as well as the input driver and output driver stages of the power amplifier. So a lot of good uh, layout on design there. Both use fans. The Emotiva uses two very small fans uh, and the Crown uses a fan as well. In my experience, I've never had any of these fans trigger or get hot. As a matter of fact, both of them run very cool to the touch. The difference between the two, the Crown runs much cooler than the Emotiva does. Is that going to mean a big difference for you on the day-to-day? Probably not. Okay, so not something that I would be really concerned about. But the versatility side, I've got to give that to the Crown as far as connectivity. You get balance inputs as well as unbalanced RCAs, tip ring sleeve as well as XLR, and RCA phono. Emotiva is strictly a RCA design or input. And that's not a slight because most audiophile folks are going to be either running XLR or unbalanced RCA anyway. Very few of them are going to run quarter inch TRS. This amplifier uh, for music listeners and home theater uh, versus the Crown. The Crown is mostly used in house of worship, large venue, application, sound reinforcement, all those kinds of things. We have to understand where these things belong in order to also be fair. Voice on the Emotiva versus the voice in the crown. Voice in the crown is about as involving as hearing a lecture from a tax count. It's pretty plain. If you're looking for excitement, this is not your amp. The Emotiva, on the other hand, it's what you kind of associate with a rich sounding Class AB amplifier. It has soul, if you will. It's not a tubi or anything like that, so let's not get this too crazy. But it definitely sounds a lot more involving than the uh, the Crown does. The Crown, you have to almost kind of actively equalize in order for it to come alive. I think that might have been Crown's or Harmon's idea when they were designing this amplifier to let you put the voice in it. Okay, and that's great if you're in a post-production house or if you're in a sound venue. Uh, you could do that. Okay, but if you're mostly like us you know, who are music listeners who, or, or home theater guys, uh, we probably won't be actively EQing nearly as much as you would have to on this crown to, to bring it to light. So out of the box, the crown is pretty unevolved. Is it accurate? Probably is. It's, it's pretty, like I say, it doesn't have really a personality at all, where the Emotiva is going to sound a lot more involving, it's going to have more meat around the bones than the crown does. That's probably the best way I could put it, is there's a lot more richness and body to it than say the uh, the crown has now does the crown sound awful no this, the crown sounds very good as far as dialogue goes uh, it makes a great center channel amplifier by the way because its articulation is really good and its noise floor is fairly low I mean, as a matter of fact i'm running that one bridged to my center channel my yamo uh, c9 to center channel and i don't hear a lot of hiss or noise or anything like that it's a reasonably quiet amplifier the biggest failing with it it, it just doesn't have any character there just isn't any anything to talk about it. I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know if that's a bad thing, but there it is. So when it really comes down to the character of the two amplifiers, you couldn't find two more diametrically opposed. One is rich and involving in direct comparison to one that's just matter of factual, could have a very big voice when pushed. It It's two different dynamics altogether. If I was to say right now, compared to say three or four years ago, when the uh, Drive 2 core came out, would I still recommend this amplifier today as my first choice? The answer is going to be no. I'm going to go with the Emotiva because of the fact for $40 more, you're getting so much more amplifier for your money. And it's just so much of an involving listen through most loudspeakers. The Crown, if you match it up properly, possibly with speakers that sound rather thick and heavy, it'd probably do it a mile of good. The Emotiva is going to go along with just about anything you put in front of it. You know, it's just, or behind it, I should say, depending upon how you look at it. I'm not going to tell anybody that an XLS 1002 is a bad amplifier or any of the, the Drive 2 core amplifiers. 
You just have to know how you're using this amplifier and its application. It's a lot less, how can we say, giving than maybe amplifiers like Imotivo or Adcom, Parasound, Rotel, you name it. They all have character. There's just no two ways about it. Whereas the Crown is about as, like I said, is about as exciting to listen to as a tax accountant, okay? Or uh, uh, your favorite science teacher to put you to sleep in less than 10 minutes. It's like that. It's not really involving. It's dry. It's boring. But I will say, it's got a lot going for it in the power department. It likes to swing a lot of power while producing no heat. And it's a very small form factor. You could rack mount 15, 20 of these here, and you're not going to generate any heat at all. It's just absolutely incredible in that area. And that's what these guys are for. They're not really meant for the guy who or the girl that loves music and really wants to get involved with it emotionally. Let's talk about a couple other small details, and I think I'm going to kind of wrap this up here a little bit. You know, when you're hooking this thing up, it's actually very easy. It takes a, any IEC power cord you want to put into it. Um, i leave that up to you how that is. The binding posts aren't quite as multi-way as you would think. Bare wire works great. Pins work great. Bananas are situational. They actually stick out through the top of the uh, binding post holes. You don't stick them in the back like, say, the Emotiva does. The Emotiva is a true five-way binding post. So in the binding post section there, I got to say, I got to give that to the Emotiva. The Emotiva just seems to be a more versatile binding post setup. As far as the RCA connections, it's a wash. Neither are TIFF connectors. There's your standard run-of-the-mill consumer RCA inputs, so take that as if you will. Balance XLR inputs on the uh, uh, Crown are Nutric XLRs. I have no idea who makes their TRS connectors, but they seem to be, you know, decent quality. So when we come down to it, the other thing too, as far as speaker versatility, I suppose the Crown makes up for itself by using speak-on connections. Remember, this is a professional amplifier. So it uses multi-way binding posts as well as the speak-on connections. And if you've never used speak-ons before, they're great. You get the length you want, uh, or you can make your own. It's a push-twist affair. It's great. Just absolutely love it. I wish they offered that on con the consumer side. That would be wonderful. But I think probably from a packaging standpoint and how most uh, home people would be as far as what is a speak-on connector? You go and talk to a person who's an audio that's it's a music listener and not necessarily involved with professional or or venue presentations they're not going to know what a speak on connection is so they're not going to miss something they don't know right so ultimately when you come down to it just to net net this thing without making this thing a 10 hour long thing like a lot of folks uh, will, will do i love the crown for what it does i love the crown for what it's capable of doing i love its versatility i love the fact it's so light it's less than 11 pounds uh, the emo was closer to around 35 pounds or so something like it's in the 30s really chunky amplifier the the crown it, it would probably you would need three crowns to make up the weight of one emo so from a transport standpoint standpoint you can't beat a crown from a cooling and efficiency standpoint you can't beat a crown from you know large venues where it was designed this is its, this is its wheelhouse this is how it was born and this is how it will go on forever and ever and ever emotiva is made for people who love their music who love doing their home theater and they don't want to spend a ton of money 449 dollars for this two channel basics a2 amplifier kind of a no-brainer all right the the crown is 409 dollars right now at sweetwater sound for example i think i believe it's the same price in amazon too so is it such a great value not anymore i'm gonna say if i have a choice between telling my friends and family to buy a good two-channel amplifier i'm gonna tell them to buy the basics a2 i'm not gonna tell them to buy the crown anymore and i've been in the crown house for a while i've gone all the way back to the 1970s with crown when they were doing professional equipment. Heck, even when they are international, when they were, they were being sold across the pond uh, uh, as Amcron. I was a fan of them back then. Stuff is bulletproof. Still is, as far as I know. I haven't had any failures or any issues on any Crown product I've owned. But, you know, Emotiva has got them where it counts. And that is in the way it sounds, in the way it's made. And they're really tailoring to their really core audience, the people who love music and the people who love home theater. And they're doing it in a way where, in most of the products, you could actually afford it. $449 is not bad for an amplifier of this kind of power and this kind of capability. So really when I come down to it, Emotiva for the win. There's just no question about it. Crown is still good, but just know where you're using it and how you're using it and what you're using it with. And I think you do okay either way. I want to thank you so very much for hanging out with me a little bit. I did want to, like I said, make this thing really long. I have no Patreon page. I don't do any of those things. I'm not paid by editorial and so on and so forth. I just don't. But go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button if you like what you heard here. Hit the don't like button if you didn't like what you hear here because it all adds to the metrics anyway. So uh, I appreciate you hanging with me today. And if you're looking for a great amplifier, you know, look up the Emotiva. I, I think they're doing the right things. If you're looking for something that you might use all over the place, 
Crown's still a good pick. It's just not a greater value as it used to be. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll do it again next time. You all take care out there. Bye-bye.